Um, but are you planning to review Simple X? And have you recently considered recommending it? Uh, this was actually done, and this was asked right before we listed Simple X on our website. So if you look on our website right now at techler.tech slash resources, Simple X is there. Um, I know Jonah's probably been wanting it to be listed for a long time, but I had a few more, like, I want to wait it out and see thoughts about it. Um, but it's been around for a long time. Uh, they've been maintaining it. They've been developing it very well, and they've been introducing new features, and it doesn't seem like it's going anywhere. So it's listed on the site. Um, as for a review, there's no plans on it on my end right now for a review, um, but it's definitely something that I should do and I want to do in the future. Um, there's just a lot of things to review. Yeah, are you still using SimpleX? Uh, I mean, I, I use it. I, there, there aren't a lot of people that use it, so it's like a, it's a very niche tool, but um, for people who want to message me on SimpleX, I, I have it available. I think we talked about SimpleX uh, a few live streams ago, and we, we talked about basically this whole thing where like TechWare can't make recommendations willy-nilly because they're going to last forever. And what about SimpleX? SimpleX for me falls into the bucket of, I need to wait and see. It's still very new and I'm very skeptical to add things when it, especially when they don't have business models because I wanna see something exist in five years. Again, people, we make suggestions for thousands of people. If I get everyone here to be like, okay guys, go use SimpleX and then thousands of people go to SimpleX, they get all this attraction and then a year later they shut down. Now we have thousands of people who moved and migrated to a messenger that is no longer being maintained, um, which means that they're gonna have maybe dozens of their own contacts each that also have to migrate to something else. So we're very careful about what we recommend back here because we don't want to put people in a crappy situation. So we stick with more like safe recommendations back here. Things that are like very proven, very established with very little risk to ourselves and to our community. Um, Simple X is still in the very early stages of that. So it's going to take me a while to put Simple X on our site and actually feel really comfortable recommending it. Yeah. Was there, I'm wondering, was there anything specific about SimpleX recently that made you decide to list it or was it just like a matter of time? No, it, um, it, was, it really was just a matter of time. It was seeing that they were still active, seeing that they were still involved, seeing that they still had updates coming out. And it really was like, okay, yeah, um, like a few people all asked in the same week and it kind of just brought it back to like the front of my mind and I just checked them out again. And then I was like, I'm getting to the point where I can't justify my position anymore on this and it's time to like evolve that position. Right. So that's that's kind of the the thought process there. Yeah, and someone asked about Threema in the live chat right now. The only reason Threema is not listed, I think Threema is great. I just I don't like the fact that it's paid. That's that's really it. That that's the one reason. And if you don't have an issue with that, and your contacts don't have an issue with that, Threema is fantastic. I just our resources are designed for people who are like getting into privacy and security for the first time. And I think that if they saw a paid messenger when all the other ones are free. It's just, it's a little bit off-putting, I think. Um, but I actually really respect the business model at the same time. I think it's really cool that they require payment. It's a more sustainable business model, personally, I think, than VC funding. And I really enjoy that Threema has that business model. But it just makes it hard to recommend because, like, I can't imagine the friction points required to get someone to use a paid messenger. It's already hard enough to convince people to use really nice free messengers, so... Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like a paid search engine is is one thing, but like with messengers, and we talked about this before as well, the network effect when it comes to like messengers in general is why it's so hard to recommend anything except like the biggest ones in the space because it's a matter of like trying to get as many people as possible to use anything private rather than a specific messenger. I would say it's I I've heard the argument. I I I've never used Threema myself. I've been kind of convinced to check it out lately because I mean, it comes up a lot. There, there's definitely a lot of people who like it, and I think it's a good argument that, like, Signal in in most cases really requires even more of an investment than um, than Threema does, uh, it, because of the phone number requirement. And it's easy to like just take it as granted for free if you already have a phone number, and a lot of people do have a phone number because you kind of need one. But at the same time, a lot of people don't have a phone number or can't get one super easily, and then they have to you know, go and get like a, a, a prepaid SIM from the store or something like that to register for an account. And it's, it, it is an investment for, for a lot of people. And I think that like, especially outside of countries like the US, I think it's more of an issue. So I've, I've seen the argument from people that it's actually cheaper to use Threema and that's Signal true. and that's why they use it. And that's something that I've been thinking about lately and was 
it's kind of why I'm convinced to check it out again. But yeah, no, that's a really valid argument. Never thought about that. Yeah, very valid argument. And I mean, there's no phone plan that's like a one time purchase. So right. it's you are committing to a subscription when you use Signal. But I think for most people, especially myself, and I can't imagine anyone else I know, they're, they're going to be using a phone number. So it is effectively free because it's kind of combined with something else. But I totally agree if you're someone who doesn't want or uh, doesn't have a phone number, then that makes a ton of sense. I think it's a really compelling argument. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this TechLore clip. This is actually a highlight from our main channel, TechLore, where we talk about digital rights, privacy, security, and how you can have a better relationship with technology. So if you want the full length experience, definitely check out our main channel, TechLore. We'll leave a link somewhere on the screen, wherever our editor puts it, and you can probably check it down in the description as well.